Hey, mathematicians, let's do your homework. Okay, I love this first question because it looks really intimidating with all these different graphs, and it's actually super easy. So you have to read the directions. You can't just jump in and pick a graph. Fiona pays $16.50 for every six shirts she has dry cleaned. Which graph models this relationship? So we think about what do you go into the dry cleaners with? Do you go in with money and the amount of money you have determines how many shirts you can dry clean? Or do you say like, I need these shirts cleaned and you count the shirts and then they tell you how much money it is. That's probably the more likely situation. So that means shirts are our dependent variable. So I'm looking, I'm sorry, no, 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 that's wrong. Shirts are our independent variable because you just decide I need this many shirts cleaned. So we are looking on our x-axis for six shirts. So here's six, here's six, here's six, and here's six. We know that it should match up when it touches the dark line that's graphed. It should match with the number $16.50. So you can pick anywhere to start. Like if I pick this one in B and I go up, 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 up. I'm not even touching that line yet. I'm probably going to intersect it like right about here and I'm over $50. So that is way too much for six shirts. That's not what the situation was telling us. Here again, we go up, 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 up. We're nowhere even close to touching this line. This line has a much steeper slope, which means that it's going to take a lot longer to hit that six and we're already past $50. This six up, 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 again, still not anywhere close. This six, doo -doo 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 -doo. oh, I finally intersected with the line. Follow it over as straight as you can. This one is a little bit more than 15. I'm betting that's our $16.50. So that's how you solve it. Joseph runs marathons. Holy cow, marathons are incredibly long running races. They're like 26 point, I want to say two miles of running all at once. And he has a constant rate of five miles per hour. Write an equation that represents the situation. The word per tells us we're dealing with something multiplicative. Rate is also a clue that we're dealing with a multiplicative relationship. The things that can change are the miles and the hours. So hours you're running, total miles you went. So let's just think it through. If you've been running for a one hour, per is for every one hour, that's five miles and one hour. If you run for two hours, that's going to be 10 miles. You can see I'm setting up like ratios because a rate is a special type of ratio. And I'm just starting to explore the relationship. I have not put them in the correct spot yet if I'm making a table because the more I think about it, the more I realize time is always my independent variable. So I'm going to say if I start at my time and I go to my total mileage, that's a multiplicative times five relationship. So five times hours equals the number of miles you've run or Joseph has run. You're going to explain exactly what this means. You kind of just heard me explain it. Tell me what the H is. Tell me what the M is. Tell me what the five represents. Mel always does 20 more sit-ups. We already talked about this word today. More means it's an additive relationship than push-ups. So my two variables can be sit-ups and push-ups. You should have more sit-ups. Sit-ups should be the bigger number. So if I do 20 plus the bigger number, that doesn't equal the smaller number. So it sounds like I should be doing 20 plus the smaller number because I'm doing more sit-ups in total. Explain it. On the back, James has regular pencils and colored pencils in her bag. Oh boy. She has 24 regular pencils. So we've got part of the bag is regular and part of the bag is colored pencils, 24 regular pencils, and 50% of the bag is colored pencils. So the total of the bag would be 100%. That means this is also 50%. So see if you can figure out how many colored pencils there are. Jeremiah interviewed students and found out that 75% of students prefer the salad bar than the regular food. 
if you talk to 200 students, how many prefer the salad bar? So first we got to ask ourselves, was it part of the school that likes the salad bar or the whole school? We know it's 75% of them. That's not the whole school. So 200 students. Oh, he talked to 200 students though. Not that 200 students like the salad bar. Talk to a total of 200 students. So you're going to set up your relationship as a part whole equals percent out of 100 and solve for the missing part. Kaylee has 30 collectible model airplanes. She inherited nine of them from grandpa, but she put the rest together herself. What part did she put together on her own? So we're looking for the part that she put together on her own. Oh wait, we do know that, that's nine. We know the total, the whole number is 30. We're actually now looking for the percent that represents that part. You might have to simplify. Brianna's collection of 80 scarves. If 40% of the scarves were not made in the USA, how many were made in the USA? So part made in the USA, part not, and total. Part made in the USA, we don't know. We do know the total is 80 scarves, or that represents 100% of her scarf collection. We know 40% are not made in the USA, so that means 100 minus 40, 60% are made in the USA. So we're looking if we have a part that we don't know the number for, we just know the percentage. We do know the total or the whole is 80 scarves. And we now know that the percent is 60% that were made in the USA. Part over whole equals percent over 100. That's your last one. 